الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day the topic which I would like to present to you this afternoon is on depression. Because depression is one of the biggest killers of human beings in the world today. If we add up those who die from cancer, and other major diseases around the world, they do not equal the number of people who die from depression. And I'm sure there are many amongst us here this afternoon who are suffering from depression due to a variety of things which may have happened in their lives, calamities, personal tragedies, failures in business, families, etc. People suffer from depression all over the world. And the drug treatments which are used, while helping to some degree to reduce the amount of self-inflicted wounds and suicides, etc. They do not come close to what Islam has prescribed and has effectively taken care, cured, healed, those who suffer from depression. First and foremost, it is important to know and to realize that the goal of a stress-free life, which is the ideal that many people strive for, motivational speakers offer a stress-free life is impossible. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has infor informed us, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ I have created human beings in a state of difficulty, struggle, stress. Allah has created us that way. This is a part of our lives. So the challenge is not to live a stress-free life, which is impossible, but to know how to handle the stress which is inevitable. That is the challenge. To handle the stress, which is inevitable. Because no one can escape difficulty, hard times, rough times, bad times, stressful times. No one can escape it. So, we as Muslims need to turn to Islam to find the solution, to find the answer 
to stress and especially to depression. Stress which oftentimes leads to depression where we're not able to find solutions. We become depressed. We're not able to connect with the reality that we live and handle that stress so we become despondent, discouraged, and in that state we may turn away from Allah, from Islam, we may hurt those around us as well as ourselves. However, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had given us a solution, a comprehensive solution to handle this situation. Knowing that our lives consist of ups and downs, he gave us a methodology for dealing with the times when things are good, up, happy, as well as advice on how to handle the times when things are down, bad, saddening, distressful. And that advice which he gave is summarized in a principle which was recently, relatively recently, promoted by a well-known motivational speaker by the name of Stephen Covey. He wrote a book concerning the seven habits of highly effective people. And one of the major principles the seven of the seven was one he called the win-win principle. Win-win. We have been raised on the idea of win-lose. If I win, you lose. If you win, I lose. But if we are both able to win, that surely is a greater circumstance than me winning and you losing, or you winning and me losing. So how can we achieve a win-win circumstance? He laid out his idea as to how to achieve the win-win circumstance in business and these other different areas. But Prophet Muhammad وسلم, laid out the principle for life, the win-win principle for life, 1,400 years ago. He laid it out in a hadith narrated by Suhaib ibn Sinan, in which he quoted Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as saying, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ The affair of the believer is amazing. His whole affair is good. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And that is only in the case of the believer. The affair of the believer is amazing, the true believer. It's amazing. Whatever happens in his life is good. We say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. We thank Allah under all circumstances. It's all good. The Prophet ﷺ went on to give us the details 
saying, In asabat hu sarra shakar wa kana khairan lah. When good comes to him, he is thankful and it is good for him. When good comes to him, he is thankful and it's good for him. What happens to most of us when good comes is that we become so happy, so overjoyed, we forget Allah. We may even attribute that good to ourselves, to other than Allah. And this is dangerous. It's not good for us. The only way that it becomes really good for us is if we're thankful. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made gratitude the foundation of faith. In our daily prayers, Surah Al-Fatiha begins with Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Why did Allah put Alhamd first? Because this is a critical principle in our lives. Gratitude to Allah. Gratitude which we must train our children to understand. This is a critical principle. Because our children, without being given that clarity, it can pass them by. And they may not understand why they should do what Islam requires them to do. If they haven't understood the gratitude principle, because we have all experienced that circumstance when our children, or we've seen it, our children around the age of three years old, we get up to pray, and they will get up beside us to pray. And of course, when we see our little three-year-old getting up, doing what we're doing, we say, MashaAllah. It's really touching to our hearts. You know, you feel that huge blessing. It warms your heart. Of course, you're so happy with your child that you will give them a reward. And they see your happiness. They see how overjoyed you are about them doing that. So they will do it more. Because they've learned, small, their minds are small. But they've learned that when they do this, mom or dad will be happy. So they will do it more, and you will be happier, and you will give them more. Till even you will reach the point where you will be there with your friends and they will come in the middle. You are not standing praying and they will start to do it by themselves. And of course all your friends will say, Subhanallah. MashaAllah. Amazing. And everybody will give them gifts. And they will do it more. And as they grow up, fasting, they will also be encouraged to fast. Little by little, the more they fast, you give them some toys, some candy, whatever, to encourage them to fast the whole day. And they're learning this principle. If we allow them to continue, when their minds start to develop. To do of Islam the rites and rituals and principles for our pleasure, to please us. We let them grow up that way. 
and they didn't understand why they're praying. What they've understood is only, I'm doing it to please mom and dad. When they find themselves in a situation where mom and dad are no longer around, what are they going to do? They'll stop praying. If the people around them are not praying, they'll stop. Because they were doing it for us. <laughs> That's why it is essential. When the Prophet Sallallahu had said, "Allimu awladakum as-salah bi Teach your children prayer by the time they're seven. This is not just the ritual movements, because they can do that. But it is understanding the prayer to the point they can lead salah. They know what to do. They will not pray if they break wind. They know it's not acceptable. They have to leave. Somebody else has to come and lead the salah. With understanding. And the greatest understanding we can give them from the time that their minds are able to grasp is that we are praying to give thanks to Allah. That is the essence. We are praying, giving thanks to Allah. If they have understood that and the rest of their deen is connected with gratitude, then they will not leave it if you're not around. Because they've understood giving thanks is a requirement. Somebody does good for you, you say thank you. That is the respectful way. They've understood you should give thanks. So this concept of gratitude is something we have to ingrain in our children and something we have to introduce to ourselves if we have missed out. If we have not understood this. If we are praying, thinking that it's a burden which Allah has put on our backs, which we need to relieve ourselves of responsibility by praying. Not giving thanks to Allah. So we'll pray 90 miles an hour. We'll pray that prayer which the Prophet ﷺ had said to the companion who did it and came to sit down to him, beside him. He said, go back and pray because you didn't pray. He went back and did the same thing again. Came back and the Prophet ﷺ said, go back and pray because you didn't pray. He repeated it until the man said, O Messenger of Allah, I know no other prayer besides this. And then the Prophet ﷺ explained to him that each movement of the prayer that you make, you have to pause in that movement. You have to pause. Let the bones of your body settle into place. There is dua that the Prophet ﷺ made in all of those places. That is the proper prayer. Not the one where we're just bobbing up and down. So, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ translated that gratitude, attitude, into his own lifestyle. In such a way that whenever anything good happened, the first thing that he would do would be to fall into prostration. He would fall down and prostrate. Sujood as shukr. This was Sunnah Mu'akkada of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did it regularly. Sunnah Mu'akkada. But where are we from that today? How many people among us today 
If we asked, put your hand, those who made, put your hand up, those people who made sujood a shukr this past week. Put your hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is that saying about the rest of us? This past week, we are hundreds here, and only seven of us made sujood a shukr. And we claim to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to bring sujood a shukr back into our lives. When people come to me, tell me they're depressed, I tell them, go make sujood a shukr. Go think about something good which Allah has done in your life and make sujood a shukr. Give thanks to Allah for it. Because that's what's missing. The depressed person says, there's no good happening to me in my life. My life is terrible. Everything is bad. He or she cannot see any good. They're blinded by the failures, the the calamities, the whatever, so they can't see good, so they need to see good. So I tell them, go make sujood a shukr. Stay in that sujood until you can remember something good which Allah has done for you that day or the day before or the day before that. And if you do that regularly, inshallah, your depression will go. Because the essence of depression is that you are unable to see good in your life. You cannot find any good around you. So you've lost hope. But in fact, in every one of our lives, no matter whatever we are faced with, there is good. We just can't see it. So sujood al-shukr is the practical way that Rasulullah sallallahu practiced himself on a regular basis. And even when people say, but oh Messenger of Allah, we are praying so long at night and you know, you're, till your feet are swollen and he said, shouldn't I be a grateful servant? That is the essence. And sujood as shukr can be done anytime. In your workplace, in the park. You don't have to have wudu. It is so simple. It's not salah, it's sujood as shukr. Even if you don't know where the qibla is, just make your sujood. This is Islam. This is the answer which Islam has given for depression in our lives. And the Prophet ﷺ went on to discuss, to give us advice concerning the other half of our lives. <coughs> when the bad times come, he said, Wa in asabathu darra. Sabar, fakana khairan la. And when bad comes to him or her, they are patient and Allah rewards them for it. It's good for them. So Judah Shukr will help you to be patient. It will help you. It will help you to overcome your sadness, your depression. And that is the promise of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because in the case 
of sujood al shukr and the thankful attitude in general, giving thanks to Allah, Allah has promised that the good that you have found in the midst of all that depression, He will increase the good, saying, La in shakartum la azidannakum. If you give thanks, I will give you more. If you give thanks, I will give you more. I'll increase the good. Wala in kafartum inna adabi la shadid. But if we disbelieve, if we are not grateful, we are not thankful. We deny the blessings of Allah in our lives, then Allah will curse us with depression. <coughs> he will curse us with punishment in spite of whatever good we have. So much so that we can't even see the good. Even though we have so much good around us, we can't appreciate that good. So, my brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reality of gratitude. Amen and ask him to forgive us for our sins of ingratitude to help us to spread revive and spread the sunnah of sujood a shukr in our homes in our families and in our communities to revive this sunnah inshallah Barakallah fikum, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Seeking knowledge and obligation made easy. Thought about studying for a long time? Tuition fees keeping you from actually starting? Islamic Online University has led a revolution in online learning. The world's first tuition free degree, BA in Islamic Studies. Access the knowledge, any place, anytime anywhere. It just doesn't get any easier than that. Classes, texts, assignments, completely online. Set your own schedule for the semester. No overseas travel required for the exams. Subjects taught by qualified English speaking scholars. Weekly live sessions in virtual classrooms. With curricula based on those in El Medina University in Saudi Arabia. El Azhar University in Cairo and other reputable institutions around the world. Why wait any longer? You pay just a symbolic registration fee and are ready to begin the adventure of higher education. The most diverse student body of any university in the world. 130,000 plus registered students from 217 countries. Log in to the website for more details. www.islamiconlineuniversity.com